Hey there, my name's Dave from Guitar Zero to Hero, and in this video, I'll be talking about getting started with the Positive Grid Spark Amp and App. So let's run through the top panel of the amp. Starting with the upper section of the top panel, we have the power switch, which powers the spark on and off. The LED indicator, which illuminates when the spark is powered on. The tap tempo button to sync time-based effects like delay to your desired tempo. So for example, my current tone has a delay with this timing. But if I want to speed that up, I'll just tap the tempo button to my desired tempo. And you'll now hear the new delay tempo. The tap tempo button also engages the inbuilt tuner on the Spark. Hold down on the tap tempo button for a few seconds and the button lights will turn off, signifying that the Spark has entered tuner mode. In this mode, the speakers will be deactivated. Start picking on the string that you'd like to tune and adjust accordingly. When a note is perfectly in pitch, the green light on button two will illuminate. To exit tuner mode, simply tap any button. Next up are our four tone preset buttons. Save your favorite tones here for quick access. Let's run through my presets. Next we have the music control volume. If you love jamming along to your favorite songs or backing tracks, use this to adjust the volume of the music streamed over Bluetooth or through the aux in jack. Note that when playing back music through the Spark amp, the USB connection takes priority over the aux in jack and the aux in jack takes priority over the Bluetooth. Next up is the headphone jack for quiet practice. Use any standard 3.5 millimeter headphone plug here. We now get to the digital knobs panel. Now knobs on digital modeling amps like the Spark work a little differently than analog knobs. The physical knob position may not reflect the setting as it's saved in a tone preset. For instance, a knob that is all the way down may actually be saved differently in your tone preset. So here you'll see my delay knob set at zero on the amp, but in my tone preset that I've saved previously, my delay is engaged and heavy in the mix, and you'll hear that. When a preset is loaded into the amp, whether that's through the app or by pressing one of the preset buttons, the preset and its settings take effect and the physical knobs on your amp will not reflect your tone. After a preset is loaded, if you move a physical knob, the changes to that parameter will then take effect. So for example, I'll move my delay knob now and let's move it back down to zero. So let's take it back down to zero and you'll hear now that I have no delay on my tone. And that's also reflected here on the app. You'll see that the delay is now disengaged. But if I move the knob up on the delay, you'll see now on the app that the delay is engaged. If you then change a setting on the app after using the knob, it will then override and become the new current setting and will not show on the physical knob. To adjust any of the knobs on the Spark, simply turn it up a little bit to engage the program and then set as desired. Press and hold the flashing preset button to save any changes you've made. If you'd like to cancel any of the changes you've made, again, simply tap on the preset button once and you'll go back to the original tone. Now let's run through some of the knobs on our amp. Our first knob is the amp selector. The Spark has a selection of awesome amps for you to use on your tone patches without the need to connect to the Spark app. Simply turn the amp selector to change from different amps. Next is our gain setting, and that determines how hard you're driving the preamp section of your amp. Setting the gain control sets the level of distortion in your tone, regardless of how loud the final volume is set. Higher settings will create overdrive, which is a desirable type of distortion. Moving on, we have our EQ knobs, bass, middle, and treble, which adjust the low, mid, and high frequencies of your tone, respectively. Next is the master, which adjusts the power amp volume for individual amps. Next, we have modulation, which controls the level of modulation effects, such as flanger, chorus, or phaser. Let me give you a short demonstration. On my current tone patch here, I have no modulation, but I'll need to engage it by just simply turning the knob. Let's start with the low modulation, and this is a phaser. Let's turn it up. Mm -hmm. 
Next is the delay knob, which adjusts our delay level. And as mentioned earlier, if you wanna adjust the tempo of the delay, simply tap on the tap tempo button to your desired beat. Let's listen to the delay at a low setting. And let's turn up. You can hear that the delays are much louder as they repeat themselves. Next is our reverb knob, which controls the reverb level of our tone. Adding more reverb to your tone gives you an atmospheric sound, but be careful not to overdo it or you'll sound like you're underwater. I'll take the reverb down, so let's listen to that. And let's take it all the way up. As you can hear, it's a much bigger sound. Sounds like I'm in a big hall. Our final knob is the output. And this is going to control the overall volume output for all of our tones. Finally, on the top panel, we have our input jack. Plug in your guitar, bass, or acoustic here. Let's take a look at the rear panel now. Firstly, we have the Bluetooth indicator light. When the light is flashing, the spark is ready to connect to mobile devices and Bluetooth enabled music players. Next is the aux in jack. Connect the output of a mobile device or music player here with the 3.5 millimeter male connector. The aux in jack takes priority over the Bluetooth speaker connection when playing music. So be sure not to leave a 3.5 millimeter jack plugged in if you decide you wanna start streaming music via Bluetooth instead. Next is the USB port. Connect the Spark to a Windows or Apple computer to use the built-in recording interface. The USB port is also used to update Spark firmware, which can be downloaded from positivegrid.com. The USB port is a data connection only. It does not pass through raw audio, but you can use it to record awesome guitar tones from your Spark amp. Finally, we have the DC power jack. Plug in your Spark power supply here. 